So recently I came across Freak's patch 14.11 preview video and he made some very interesting points about the role of champion mastery in someone's climb. You already know that I'm a huge advocate for champion mastery because I genuinely do believe it's single-handedly the most important thing you can use to climb. We're not going to watch the whole thing, it shit is like two hours long, but just the initial bit and we're going to see if there's any extra bits of insight that we can pick up on. My name is Rabies and I'm a talentless monkey who started in bronze and got to diamond. Through my videos I hope y'all can learn that literally anyone can get diamond. Before you forget, make sure to like and subscribe for more no BS climbing content. Uh, I want to talk about uh, champion mastery and resting win rate a bit here. I'm going to bring it up a couple times while talking about various champion changes in um, in this patch. So uh, broadly speaking, the observed win rate of a champion is reasonably accurate, but uh, pretty imprecise. And what I mean by that... Before Freak tells us what he means by that, let me land real quick. Basically, all the win rates you observe here are technically correct. However, they don't tell the full story because of the innumerable amounts of factors that go into it. Champion mastery, of course, being a particularly big one. That is obviously, if a champion has like a 30% win rate, they're either brand new or fairly horrible. If a champion has a 70% win rate, they're pretty clearly wildly overpowered, right? Um, pretty much no one gets to be below 40 or above 60 outside of, again, brand new champions. Okay. Notice what he said here. This is actually a massive point. He's basically reinforcing the 40-40-20 rule. 40% 40 of your games are auto wins. That's why you rarely ever drop below 40% win rates, given you have enough games at your true skill level. On the flip side, 40% are L's, which is also why you don't see many accounts sit consistently above 60% win rate, unless they've smurfed to level up their account or something. I covered this in my coin flip video, but in summary, all the climbing you do exists in the 20% of games in the middle. If you play 10 games, you'll only be given maybe 2 or 3 chances to really leave your mark on that game. This is just how matchmaking works guys, so don't be a little bitch about it. I'll link my coin flip video in the top right if you want a 5 minute insight into how you're supposed to climb despite the flippy matchmaking from Riot. Okay. Um. Anyway, though, considering that the vast majority of champions sit between 47 and 53% win rate, and players will be like, ah, Tarek, the worst champion of the game with a 52% win rate, means that clearly just win rate is not enough to match perception of power. Um, here's Kassante at 45, and people are like, this champion is shattered, where are the nerfs? And this here is a difference in perception. Even though Tarek is an objectively stronger champion than Kassante, Reddit Tarks aren't frustrated by him because of how inoffensive his play pattern is. On the other side, even though picking Kassante for the regular player is definitely suboptimal in terms of winning the game, people hate how he's a fucking tank, bruiser, assassin, battle mage, fucking ADC sometimes. One of the inputs that is pretty relevant in terms of rafting win rate to actual power is observing uh, required champion mastery and how far down that mastery rabbit hole players actually are. So I'm going to spill some random data at you. Um, some of this I don't remember perfectly, but I'm going to be relatively accurate. So uh, let's talk about like 1 through 20 or 1 through 30 game mastery curves. Um, virtually every champion gains win rate. Every single game you play them, um, games 1 through 20, usually game 1 through 20. It's like exactly Malphite stops at 20, then every other champion goes to at least 30. I would actually play fucking Malphite in my games. I have to sadly permaban it since I'm essentially a Trinomir OTP at this point. Imagine capping out all you can possibly learn about the champion in 20 games. That's so much more time you can spend dedicated to improving your general League of Legends skills. I hope you guys understand how valuable that is and why I always recommend motherfuckers to play simple champions. Because most of the time, guys, it's not really your skill with a certain champion that gets you that rank. 60 to 80% of your rank comes from how good you are at League of Legends, the game, not fucking Yasuo, the champ. Pretty important to internalize if you want to keep ranking up fast in the long term. What I really want to talk about is. Um Relative champion novices are players with uh, kind of amalgamated together 20 games or fewer on a champion. Again, unless we're literally Malphite, uh, every single champion here is losing win rate by having players in the novice category. Um, how, so when a, when a champion is locked in, in your like average game solo queue, what percentage of players are classified as novices, aka 20 games or fewer on the champion? What percentage of the time when you see Yasuo or Samira or Rel or Kasante or whatever, again, average out across the entire roster here, those are the champion ticket numbers. Um, what do you expect the rate of novices to be people with 20 games or fewer on the champion when they're locked in? What percentage of lock ins are 20 games or fewer? Every champion has a different mastery curve here. So, for example, uh, as I mentioned, Malphite is done at 20 games, which means really, as long as you're a novice, you're instantly a Malphite main. That's a little fraudulent, but like, you're done learning the like intricacies of the champion. Uh, if you're playing like Misfortune, it's like 35 games. Um, anyway, uh, if you're playing Azir, it's over a thousand games. If you're playing Lee Sin, it's over 1500 games. Holy shit. I knew it was high, but I would have never guessed it was over a thousand. <laughs> To put it into perspective guys, I've one tricked Trin for about four and a half months now and I've clocked in about 220 games across all my accounts. That means to get to the 1500 games needed for Azir, a champion that I really really like by the way, it would take me two and a half years to reach that level of required mastery. This is fine if you really like Azir and are committed to that fucking 30 month journey, but most of y'all aren't. True you like Azir, but you just
just want to play him because you saw that faker shuffle against ruler last year and now you want to mimic that like a fucking monkey well that's fine to do in normals or whatever but don't waste your ranked grind on these kind of champions it's fucking pointless you won't spend the necessary amount of time required to actually get the win rate you're looking for out of it now what i'm going to say here is uh let's run arbitrary line in the sand let's run arbitrary line in the sand because again lee sin goes to 1500 games um if you say you got a thousand games on lee sin as you have a lee sin made I'm lying. You're clearly Lee Sin Bane. You're not done mastering him, but you're clearly a Lee Sin Bane. Um, if you're, you know, 500 games in on Lux, you've more than maxed out a mastery curve. You're also clearly Lux at this point, right? So no matter what line you pick, it's going to be arbitrary, and some champs still have mastery to gain, and some champions don't. Um, so I'm picking an arbitrary line, which is 300 games of prior experience. 300 games is actually a solid pick. You'd have to main the champion for a whole year to get to that number, provided you don't spam games like a fucking imbecile. I'm not even at 300 games either. And at that point, if you played this champion on your account for 300 games, I'm considering you a main. Um, what percentage of the time when a champion is locked in do you think they are played by a main with 300 games on their league account on that champion? Well, and this is in Rex only, by the way, for like the, uh, they're locked in measurement. Well, for novices, it's about one third of the time. For mains, it's about 12% of the time, which means the other roughly 50% of games played are between 20 games and 300 games on the champion, which is obviously a very, very large grouping here, but for most champions, there was win rate across between point A and point B. That is actually bonkers. There's a lot to unpack here. First, the fact that 30% of you motherfuckers don't even have 30 games on the champion you're picking is fucking bonkers. I, I actually can't even believe that. It ties hand in hand with most people being stuck in low elo. They're just playing whatever the hell they want to get a dopamine hit instead of respecting the loss of ranked and committing to a champion. It's crazy. If you just play the game the way it was meant to be played, you will succeed at it. Fucking shocker, right? Conversely, it's crazy how you can land yourself in the top 10 of the player base simply by investing just 300 games into a champion. That's like guaranteeing yourself at least Emerald 3 if you stay disciplined and focus on cultivating champion mastery instead of jumping around like a fucking monkey. This is the shit I've been trying to say ever since I started my channel, guys. But now we have a lead designer saying the same shit, backed up by the most accurate data available. You can always play whatever champion you want in norms or on other accounts. For the love of God, limit the number of champs you play in solo queue. Otherwise, you don't have an excuse to bitch and whine about why you're cement stuck. But the fact that a third of all games are at the bottom of the mastery curve, and only 10%-ish of all games are the high mastery curve, and for many champions, they're not done yet, um, means that most champions, their winners are actually dictated by how easy they are, not how good they are. Also, it makes sense. The easier that a champion is, the more you can get out of it with the less games invested. That's something I've also said. Make your journey as easy as possible. Why do you think I play fucking Trindamir mid instead of Yasuo? It's just free low, man. Um, it's not like bring up breakpoints here. It's like at some point in time, you say, well, this is the point at which I decided that you are good at your champion or whatever. The reason I bring this up is one consistent way, if you're looking for a consistent way to measure win rate, is to say, let's not, let's not compare observed champion win rate. Let's compare the observed win rate of mates. If you have 300 games or more on your champion, what is the win rate actually meant to be at that point in time? What is the win rate of 200, um, or sorry, of 300 games or more on your champion? And then at that point, okay, fine. At that point, we'll balance you for that win rate. We'll balance you to say that actually, we know Malphite's very, very easy and Nidalee's very difficult. Well, 200, 300 games on Malphite and 300 games on Nidalee will have the same win rates. Nidalee keeps going past 300, which means choosing to master Nidalee will make a race stronger champion than Malphite. Choosing to, choosing to master Malphite is well, there's not a he's easy champion. And unsurprisingly, by the way, there are very, very few Malphite mates. Um, one other point out is that the proportion of players who are novices and the proportion of players who are mains differs by champion. Malphite, when I said the average is 12%, have a long experience on champion, Malphite's at 5%. Cled is at 36%. Actually, the math checks out. Cled players are just 20-year jail sentences waiting to happen. Uh, so I ran a model which basically says, if we balance every champion to have the exact same win rate at 300 games of experience or more, and then graph that back against what portion of players are brand new, what portion of players have regular games, and the observed right now, what should their actual observed win rate be? Um, so in the case of Billy, like Emerald Plus win rate would be around 48%, and she's a balanced champion at like top 10% players, 48% win rate. Because on average, enough players are bad at Billy that they're gonna drag her win rate down about 4% below what a 300 game mastery player would give you. This uh, is actually quite interesting. So Nidalee's win rate amongst players who have 300 games on her is 52%, but she has to be balanced at 48% to account for novices playing her before they've hit the mastery requirement. So if you're like, well, I can play Navi or I can play Rahul, okay, at 300 games, they're equal. At 400 games, Rahul is just better. Flat out, just a better champion, okay, on average, if you're experienced and saying that, yes, if you choose to take the mastery journey, Rahul will reward you more than an easy to play champion like Navi or Lulu or Sona. Okay, fine. However, if you're going to dabble and you're going to play a few champions and you're only going to you know, play champions like 50 times, 80 times, whatever, the easy champions will be more rewarding if you're a dabbler. <laughs> if you're going to dabble. That's a nice way to put it. Little hard stuck dabblers running around the rank ladder. Notice how he said easy champs will be better if you're a dabbler. There's a small distinction here. A lot of players pick what champions they want to play based off of tier list. Here's the kicker. 
Picking a champion from the tier list might be fine if it wasn't one of those hard to play champions that required a lot of mastery. If fucking Orn was in S tier and you decide to abuse him for a patch, as much as I don't like this idea in the long term, it's way better than seeing Camille or Aurelia in S tier and deciding you're gonna abuse that instead. If champions were like stocks, champ difficulty is basically how long you'd have to wait before you cash in your LP games. Well guys, I hope this has been an insightful video on some of the behind the scenes mechanics of how Riot chooses to balance the ladder and how absurdly important champion mastery is. I've linked my own champion mastery video on the screen right now, as well as my take on what the league rank ladder is actually testing. Links to join the Discord are also in the description below. Check out my coaching while you're there. It's only like $10 a month. Like and subscribe for more no BS content like this. And tell me what you think of videos like this. It's my first time making any kind of react content and I wanted to see if y'all enjoyed it. Learn to carry your games and remember, anyone can get diamond.